this story is mostly true, or it's more or less true, or it's at least as true as the tradition of Luke's telling of the story of the birth of baby Jesus. Every night a child is born is a holy night. The bombs are dropping and Hala moans from her latest contraction. She squeezes Ahmed's hand, breathing, breathing. Her short staccato breaths take her focus, moving her through the pain. In the middle of this one, it gets hot. And she cries out, but her teeth are clenched, so it comes out more like a grunt than a shout. And then the pain recedes again. More breath. Hala slowly releases her grip, unwinding the vice around her husband's neck. And she leans back, taking a short break. Hala is almost unnoticeable here in the hospital, her pain a single stroke in a mural of anguish. Gaza has been under siege for almost 80 days, and the hospital has no electricity. The water is bottled, and it is precious. Her doctor has some supplies passed out by one of the United Nations relief agencies with its eyes on Gaza's 5,000 plus pregnant women. But there weren't enough supplies and she knew that this baby would need to come easy. But this is her first baby and Hala doesn't know if it will come easy. She and Ahmed decided to take the risk and come to the hospital in case she needed help. At least there would be doctors, even if they didn't have electricity or equipment, they would know what needed to happen if, if. But Hala can't think like that now, not in her one small break from the pain. So she turns to Ahmed and she asks him to sing. Ellie starts to wring her scarf in her hands. Another contraction is coming and her husband Avi is away at war. She knows that she is lucky. She is alive. Her baby is alive. Her husband is alive. And too many people she knows lost someone in the October 7th attacks. But she is sad. And she is angry and she's afraid and she is alone. She is giving birth alone. She sucks air through her teeth slow and fast and slow and fast and slow and fast and then she breathes out again as the snake of pain loosens its grip around her belly. Where is Avi, she wonders. Where is he right now? Is he okay? Will he make it home? Hala bears down again, coming close to screaming this time, and she arches and twists in Ahmed's arms. The doctor has just been to visit, and he used some of the hospital's precious, limited soap and water to wash his hands before he checked her, and she is grateful for that. No gloves but soap and water, and she knows she is lucky for that. But even more lucky, the baby isn't breech. Thank God, thank God the baby is facing the right way, the contractions are progressing, and she won't be one of the women who has to have surgery without anesthetic, thank God, thank God. Another contraction comes and Ellie twists her scarf in her hands and she gasps. The doctor was just here and he told her that she is seven centimeters dilated. She's in it now. She finally gives in and she calls her best friend Mira to come and hold her hand for the active labor. 
She was trying not to call her. Mira has three small children of her own, and her husband is gone too. And Eli feels terrible. Ellie feels terrible calling and asking for help. But she couldn't stand it anymore. She couldn't get through the terrifying, painful work of childbirth with just the company of the beeping hospital monitors. So now Mira is looking for childcare, and then she's coming to the hospital to be with Ellie. The one doctor trying to serve all the people on Hala's floor returns because he hears her contractions getting closer. Again, he uses some of the precious soap and water to wash his hands and to check her. It's time, he says to her and to Ahmed, and they both move to get a clean sheet under Hala. Since she's been at the hospital, though, the sun has set, and so a couple of other patients' family members come over, and they hold their phones up so the doctor can see what he's doing. I can see your baby's head, he tells her. The next time you feel a contraction, I need you to push. Mira is at the hospital now, and Ellie feels less afraid, less alone. They hold on to each other as the doctor gives Ellie instructions, but neither of them can hear much beside each, besides each other's heartbeats. They don't know where their husbands are. They've lost so much, and they are so scared of losing more. Trauma is a funny thing. It can rip you apart, but it can also bind you together. It makes the small things smaller and the big things bigger. And right now, all Ellie can hear is the whoosh of her own pulse and see the small crinkles of Mira's smile. The doctor is getting her into the bed now. He is loading her into the stirrups now, and he is talking, saying something. He puts on his gloves and more nurses come and now there are a lot of people in the room looking at her but she really only sees Mira who is nodding at her and telling her she's doing great. Did you hear that, Ellie? It's time to push, Mira says. And so the two women push. And the two women scream. And the two women bear down and they hold their loved one's hands and they pray. And the babies come, just like they've always come, born of their parents, born of Hala and Ahmed, born of Eli and Avi. The babies come. On two sides of a man-made line, they come both bearing the likeness of God, both bearing the hearts of their parents, both screaming into the world of flesh and love held by their families and carrying the hopes of their people, the hopes of the holy, the hopes of the future. The babies come just like they've always come into a weary world torn by violence, yet again, the babies bear the hope that this time, this generation, will get it right. Because yet again, as the poet says, love takes the risk of birth. Jesus was Jewish. And Jesus was Palestinian. Both of these things are historically true of Jesus the human and in Jesus the story. Jesus the Christmas story of the baby being born in the inn into a weary world torn by violence yet again. Jesus is also Sudanese and Ukrainian and Congolese, and Jesus is also black and gay, and Jesus is trans, and Jesus is female. The miraculous, hope-bringing baby is everywhere 
that humans are suffering because the story of Christmas Eve is a story about love being born into a suffering world. It is a story of remembering the beauty and the fragility and the holy miracle of each and every human life. And all over the world tonight, there are pregnant Marys and searching Josephs navigating the capricious and cruel requirements of tyrants and empire. Everywhere, there are vulnerable babies who need love to conquer cruelty this time. We tell the story again to remember that God lives in every human being on the planet, in the pumping hearts pulsing all over the globe, in every scary dark corner, in every town without water, in every child cowering from the sound of bombs. And God is here, too, with us. Crowded in on this silent night, the holy is here in our hopeful hearts, in our lonely longing, in our worry that we can't fix it. Whatever it is, the holy comes in and wraps itself around us in every fearful thought and whispered prayer and every moment of wondering if it will ever get better. I am here. Love whispers, I am here with you, in you, and in everyone, everywhere tonight. Hold me, love asks. Carry me, take care of me, bring me alive in this weary world. May it be so. And amen.